This is the sketchbook I'm going to be using for my seasonal wildflowers. It's by Hannah Muller and it's their A4 landscape. So when you open it up, it's going to be quite long. So what I'm going to do is actually start painting in this aspect. So that's quite a lot to fill up, but I do like a good challenge, as you know. I'm going to be using my Winsor & Newton watercolour set for this. They're professional pans and also the Winsor & Newton Synthetic Squirrel Quill Brush. I think this needs a little bit of a clean. This is what I'm going to try and capture across the double page of my sketchbook. As you can see, they come slightly bendy, wavy, and I'm going to try and capture some of these characteristics along with that beautiful bright yellow. So let's start off by mixing up a lovely yellow and I've got this uh, lemon yellow here, which is quite cool. So we need to introduce something that's a little bit warmer. So I want something that's kind of in between those and it's going to be quite a, a light wash to begin with. And I'm going to start um, here, I think. And I'm really just trying to get the shape. I'm not trying to get the, uh, the little details. I've actually taken my glasses off because I, I'm seeing just blurry shapes now, which is actually good because I can't concentrate on details because I can't see them. So this is the, the branch that a lot of the um, blooms are coming out of. I know that there's um, sort of different yellows happening in there, but I, I will be adding a bit of contrast in a little bit. The main thing is just to get this done. So the, the next stem comes, well, in this version here, it, it goes off at an angle more like that, but I want to fill up this negative space up here. So I, I'm just gonna um, skew it a little bit so to suit my needs, which is absolutely fine. I've never actually painted for Scythia um, with watercolors. I've done a collage version, I think. Um, no, actually tell a lie, I have done it, but it was when I was very, um, much a beginner in my sketchbook. So I did a uh, sort of a pen line and watercolor version. So this is a, a lot looser and it'd be interesting to try and compare the two. I've left room up here because the stalk, sorry, the stem actually extends and there's a green bud at the top, but the same, same again with this one here. And the, there's a second branch that runs almost parallel, but There's a, there's a big variety of the blooms congregating in this area, but I, I can't add it all, so I'm, I'm, I'm just going to add an approximation. Otherwise, I'll just get myself confused and I'll probably overwork, which we don't want. So I know in there we're going to have to um, play with the contrast a, rather a bit just to, to help the, um, the view understand what's going on. And if I move this up, um, it does... The stem comes down to more about here, so that will be the top half. The twiggy branch is like a sort of a grey ochre, but it's warm, it's warm and grey, so I think I'm just going to mix up a tiny bit of um, the Quinn Gold with that as well, and maybe a, a touch of brown and maroon. Yeah, the, I'm going to have to um, add a bit more contrast to this twig, this branch, while it's wet. This is just like, um, that's probably gone a little bit too dark. I'm just plotting the main shape of it, and then I can add a little bit more detail while the paint is wet. Right, now I do want to add just pops of green now. So let's mix that up. 
just going to use that the yellow that I've already got on there oh no I can use this bit here actually so it's a very very pale so I'm going to use some of this quin gold um, sorry quin green really sort of glows perfect for spring blooms like this and I'm probably going to add ink to this later on so I'm leaving some room for potential inky lines So what I'm going to do now is drop in, while the, the paint is still wet, I need to drop in a bit of extra pigment because if you look closely, it's a lot more orange. So I want to introduce a tiny bit of orange, golden sort of orange rather than anything that's too um, bright. So using the same wash that I use for the branches, I'm just going to drop a little bit in where it meets the stem. And because the pigment is still wet, the wash is still wet the pigments are able to mingle and and flow and that's going to create some really lovely effects so now i'm going to fill the rest of this space with um, the other sprigs well to be inspired by other sprigs We've got this negative space here and I don't like negative space, so I'm gonna try and fill it up. I think what I might actually do, even though I, my stems don't extend down that far, I might just start making it up. This very relaxed approach with watercolor and ink actually flies against decades worth of conditioning and certain perfectionist tendencies that I sometimes still lapse into. We're getting to the inking part and this is the particular colour I want to use which is burnt sienna which is a lovely sort of golden colour and this is my preferred nib it's called the blue pumpkin by browser and I, it's just a standard handle that I've got here so I'm going to start to show you how I'm going to ink this section here and what a lot of people um, like to do is to outline everything but I particularly like to just pick things out branch here there's there's little buds and there's little greenery so I'm just going to pick out a selection of that using the ink I don't want to pick out everything because I work pretty loosely and I think I've got enough information here for uh, the viewer to understand what's going on I can see like tiny little buds forming just here I did actually create a green bud here because I wanted to draw in yellow floral just here using ink and that, that's why I also left a little bit of space there and oh I think this is going to turn out that's lovely that is I, I like combining a, a mixture of ink and watercolour I think um, it, it's it's basically like a, a contrast of sorts so we've got that graphic quality of the line but also the softness coming from the, the watercolours. There's quite a lot happening here, so I'm just gonna pick out just some of the petals. I don't need to include everything. You can make a decision. There's lots of flowers in that particular section there, but due to the density, so the brain's working it out for you. You don't have to spell it out, basically. That's how I feel about it anyway. In order to embrace that loose, unhindered watercolour application, we have to take a lot of risks and make a lot of mess. But this is where the magic is going to happen. I'm going to be using this acrylic ink by Dala Rowney. It's called Red Earth. And I think it will just give a tiny bit more contrast than the burnt sienna I was using so that I can differentiate between the, the contrast involved within the florals and this stem here because if you look carefully it's quite bumpy and I want to add those characteristics. We are going to be confused and there's going to be a lot of botched attempts but this is where the sparks of magic will help you to innovate in bigger ways. 
this economy of loose painting does make it hard to do well so please embrace experimentation and don't be afraid to take risks ask yourself oh what will happen if i do this what will happen if i change that don't think about it too much just take action and watch the results and then move forward